Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I want to tell you about the pellets that I like to use when using a pellet grill and the ones I think you should avoid. One of the questions I get all the time from people who watch the channel is, hey, I love your videos, I have a pellet smoker, but I can't seem to get the kind of smoke flavor that I really want to get. What should I do? So I usually follow that up with a question. What kind of pellets do you use? And almost always, I would say probably 80 plus percent of the time, they'll say, I use Traeger pellets. In my opinion, that's your number one problem. When you're using a pellet cooker, there are limits to how much you can be involved in the fire management process. You can set the temperature, you can kind of choose the controller that you use, whether the fan is constant or the fan turns on and off. You can choose those things at the onset, but when it comes to actually running the fire, you have to trust the pit and the pellets to do their jobs. When choosing a pellet, you have to examine a few different factors. Number one is the quality of the pellet. So is it going to gum up your smoker? Is it gonna cause problems? Is it not gonna feed properly? Is it going to um, you know, create lots of ash that you don't want? That's the first issue. The second issue is flavor. Certain pellets produce certain flavors. There are some that produce more flavor than others. That's, I think, indisputable. And then the third thing is availability. So some pellets might be great, but difficult to find. So you have to consider all of those things when choosing a pellet. I wanna give a caveat here. I don't hate Traeger. I own a Traeger. I think that the more people who are barbecuing, the better. I'm not trying to take the company down or blast them or anything like that. It's just for my viewers, I want you to have the best possible experience with barbecue. And I think in order to achieve that, you need to use pellets that have more flavor than the Traeger pellets that I've tried at least. In addition to not trying to trash Traeger, I want you guys to know that I have no vested interest in any of the other pellet brands that I'm gonna to mention today. So I don't really have a dog in this fight. I just wanna see you guys be successful. Now I'm gonna give you kind of two sides to this coin. The one is, first, experientially, what I've experienced when using different kinds of pellets. Then the second is reasons why I think this is true. So first, I will say that the least amount of smoke flavor I think I've ever achieved on a pellet grill has come from the Traeger pellets from Costco. I don't know if they're just in a different bag or if they're a different blend or, or what, but I just know that anytime I've used them, they provided almost no smoke flavor. Whereas other brands of Traeger pellets provide a tiny bit more, but not nearly as much as some of the other brands I'm gonna tell you about. Before we get further into today's video, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Hone. You may not know this, but as a man ages, his testosterone decreases by about one to 2% year over year, which means that the older you get, the lower your testosterone levels fall. What's more is that today, men have testosterone levels that are 25% less than their grandfathers did at the same age. Low testosterone can cause muscle loss, poor sleep, and myriad other health issues that can decrease your quality of life. The biggest complaint from men is that they just don't have the energy to get through the day anymore. And while they're working, they can't focus like they used to. I know for me, I started thinking about these things as I had lower energy, poor sleep, and all these things that were pointing me, maybe this is what's going on, maybe it's my diet, I don't know, but I want to find out because this is an aspect of my health I wanna take control over. Hone will send you an at-home assessment. It's simple, it's easy, all you have to do is follow the instructions on the box. This assessment measures your hormones and overall health, and when you get your results, you meet with a physician online who develops a personalized treatment plan just for you. I recently sent in my assessment and I'll be meeting with a licensed physician to go over my results. There's no need to suffer in silence. Take control of your health and you should contact Hone. Click on the link in the description and take hold of your health today. Other brands that I've had success with, I'm gonna give you a full list at the end, but uh, Lumberjack, 100% oak pellets, I've had great success with that, been very happy. Uh, the Pits and Spits pellets that I've used have been very good. Uh, the Smoke Ring pellets that I've used have been very good. There are lots and lots of great options. So you don't have to, I'm not trying to endorse a single pellet brand. What I'm trying to tell you is, there's a lot of good stuff out there, don't use the stuff that doesn't work well. So let's get into the reasons why I think this is the case. I can't tell you how Traeger makes their pellets. I don't know. But I do know that they have a patent to make pellets by using wood oils. So say for instance, they use alder and add hickory oil to the alder sawdust, and then those would be hickory pellets. And as a matter of fact, there was a lawsuit against Traeger, maybe it was last year, I think, uh, where they were accusing Traeger of this very thing. And Traeger, in part of their response, said that they've been using the same process to make pellets for 16 years. Well, I believe they filed for that patent in 2004, which would be about 16 years before. So if they've been using the same exact process, then maybe they're doing exactly what they filed a patent for. Now, can I prove that they do this? No. Do I think they probably do? I think so. Maybe they don't. 
Maybe it's just a, you know, a play action fake. And maybe they're just trying to fake us out and make them think, oh, well, that's what they're doing. They're using wood oils and they don't at all. I don't know. I just know that when I've used Traeger pellets, I don't get as much flavor and I have worse results in the end. All right, so I went out and got a bag of Traeger pellets for the purpose of this video. They work well in terms of providing consistent heat. They don't gum up your smoker. They appear to you know, be well constructed, good in terms of quality, just not great in terms of flavor. So one thing that's important to notice is check out the bags of whatever pellets you buy. So if you have a preferred brand X, look at the bag, see what the bag says. This bag says natural flavored hardwood. Well, why wouldn't it just say natural hardwood? I think that's actually kind of the crux of the issue in the lawsuit. I'm not 100% certain. I'm no lawyer. This is not, you know, legal advice. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I'm just telling you what I see and why I make the decisions that I do. So I see natural flavored hardwood. That tells me there's some kind of flavoring being added. And from the Traeger literature, it says that it uses hardwood, it uses soybean oil, and sometimes other things like wood oils or citrus or rosemary or what have you. But I'll, I'll include that text in this video so you guys can see it for yourself from their own literature. So do you want hickory pellets or do you want hickory flavored pellets? I don't know about you, but I want hickory pellets or I want whatever it says on the bag. And so read what's on the bag. It's so important. So let me give you another bag to see that's going to show you the difference. Switch. All right, here we have a bag from Lumberjack Pellets, and these are the pellets that I use 95% of the time. Occasionally, I'll use other pellets if I you know, don't have access to these, and these aren't really readily available where I live, but I order them online. I'll include a link for these on Amazon and then a bunch of the other brands that I'll mention. You make the choice. You know, For somebody who uses a stick burner like I do, the quality of the wood that I use and the source of the wood that I use is important. The moisture content of the wood I use is important. The variety of the wood that I use is important. The size of the wood that I use is important. So for someone who's using a pellet grill, you need to have the same mindset when it comes to choosing the right pellets because the right choice in pellets versus the wrong choice can make all the difference in your barbecue. All right, on this bag, it says 100% oak. So I called Lumberjack Pellets and I said, hey, do you add any soybean oil as a lubricant for your pellets? They said, no. Do you add anything besides wood? They said, no. I said, so is it accurate to say that the only thing in your pellets is wood? There's nothing else. And they said, yeah, that's true. And so I said, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And so for their 100% oak, they debark the wood because they believe that the flavor of the wood pellets comes from the cambium that's on the outside. So the cambium is the layer just under the bark. And they believe that's where most of the flavor lies. And they believe that also a lot of the flavor comes from the bark, but what they do for blends is say they'll have a hickory blend. They'll take debarked oak as a base and then they'll add hickory. So they're actually adding the woods that are on the bag and they tell you. They'll say it's 60% this and 40% that. So the transparency is exactly what I want because I want to make the decision for myself. I don't want to be told this is super awesome, great stuff, use it. I don't want to see signature blend and not know what's in it. So that's why I like Lumberjack and I've had good results. My favorite is 100% oak. Now the others I've used, they have good flavor, but they produce more ash because the bark that's present. So to sum it up, rule number one is read the bag, okay? If the bag says 100% oak, call the company, make sure it's 100% oak. Because what have you got to lose other than 16 hours of your time and a bad meal? One thing I forgot to mention is this says 100% virgin tree fiber with no additives. No additives of any kind. So reading the bag is important. But I asked them, well, what separates your brand from other brands? And they told me that they get the lumber, right? They process everything and they get the full log that gets put into the pellet rather than just sawdust that could be from other processes. Now, I'm not saying that's what Traeger does. I have no idea what they do, right? Other than I know that they have a patent for certain technologies that they may or may not use in making pellets. But I do know that's what Lumberjack uses. And they are apparently of high quality. In terms of flavor, I really like their flavor in comparison to some other brands. Um, like Traeger, I don't care for. Pit Boss, I don't really care for. I don't hate those companies or those brands. Nothing against them. I'm just saying this is my preference. So for your benefit, I reached out to Eric Rowley from Barbecue HQ and this guy knows as much about pellet smokers as almost anyone in the world. Maybe he knows as much as anybody in the world. 
but he is an expert when it comes to pellets. He knows about the burn time of the pellets. He knows about how much heat they produce. He knows about how well they work in the smoker. So if there's anyone I would trust with this, it would be him. And so I asked him, hey, can you give me a rundown of the different brands of pellets and what we should know about them? He gave me a list and he said, Lumberjack, they're great quality. Um, Green Mountain Grills, he said, they're mid-range. Not bad, not great, pretty available, no problem. Uh, Traeger Costco, he said, cheap and available. Um, Pit Boss, he said, cheap and available. Smoke Ring, he said, quality. Uh, Naughty Wood, super quality. That's K-N-O-T-T-Y, wood, super quality. And then finally, Cookin' Pellets, super quality. So according to him, the very best pellets are Cookin' Pellets and Naughty Wood. I haven't tried Cookin' Pellets because I've never seen them. But I think after this, I'm gonna order some online. Anyway, so those are the ones that he recommends. I think that there are a number of good options out there. Doesn't matter to me which ones you choose. I just want you to have the information to make the choice knowingly so that you know what you're getting in that bag. It's not something that you don't think it is. You guys have probably heard me say in the past that more important than the kind of wood you use in an offset smoker is the kind of fire that you burn. So if you burn a really good fire with hickory, it's gonna be a lot better than a really bad fire with pecan. Now, I prefer pecan to hickory, but the kind of fire you burn, how oxygen rich it is, how hot the coal bed is, all that stuff is more important. With pellets, you don't get to make those decisions. So the kind of pellets you choose is super important. So if you want to have the biggest impact on the kind of flavor you put on your barbecue, you have to choose pellets that are gonna be commensurate with the kind of food you're cooking. If you guys like Traeger pellets, go with Traeger pellets. They're everywhere, they're convenient, no problem, but make an informed choice and maybe try a couple different options. So if you've never tried Traeger pellets before, you could try them out. If you always use Traeger pellets, you could try something different. But what I'm really looking for more than anything is for you guys to provide feedback in the comments because I wanna know what you guys use. Now, I have one pellet smoker and I've cooked on a handful of different pellet smokers over the years, but you guys have a lot more hours with pellet smokers than I do. And as much as anything, I want to learn about barbecue in every way. And with pellet smokers, I have limited knowledge, but not as much as a lot of you guys out there. So there's a lot I can learn. So let me know which pellets you prefer in the comments, and I'm gonna to try to read through those and respond as much as I can so that we can all learn together. By the way, it's uh, starting to become fall out here, and it's getting cooler. If you wanna pick up a Mad Scientist barbecue hoodie, if you scroll down below the video, there should be an option available to get one. They're really nice, really comfortable. I love mine. To wrap this up, I would encourage you all to try a couple different brands. Find the one that you like and make the choice that's right for you. Make sure you consider quality, availability, and flavor. And if you choose the pellet that's right for you, you're gonna be a happier pit master in the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and I hope you learned something. If you did, hit the like button down below and you can also subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.